This is the lathe ball turning attachment I designed and built. The handle is removable for convenient storage. As befitting, the ball turner must have a ball on its handle. The housing is held in the tool post with the cutter body's axis of rotation level with the lathe spindle center. The cutter body has a clamp used to hold the cutter head. The cutter head is held against the cutter body and thus kept in alignment. A graduated screw is used to move the cutter head in the body. The clamp is then tightened before starting the cut. Here is a better view of how the cutter head and cutter body come together. The thread pitch is 1 mm and each graduation represents 0.1 mm. After mounting in the tool post, the tool is aligned with the face of the chuck. The tip of the tool is then aligned with the lathe center. The stock needs to protrude so that the cutter head clears the chuck. The sphere shall be machined at the end of the stock. The tip of the tool needs to be aligned with the sphere's center. The diameter of the workpiece is divided by two. And the tool moved from the face by this amount. The cutter is retracted so that it can clear the workpiece. It is then gradually advanced into the bar to form a sphere. The handle is installed. And the carriage locked. The cutter is located at the center of the sphere. Cutter is advanced by the required amount and the clamp locked. Cuts are started at the center of the sphere, till a sphere of the required diameter is turned. A pip on the sphere indicates that the cutter is not centered. This is remedied by advancing or backing the cross slide. It's done. Only a hemisphere was required for this project. The housing was made by welding a section of tubing to a piece of square bar. It was held in between the lathe chuck and a drill chuck, against the bar held in the tool post. The ends were tack welded, then it was removed and completely welded.
The housing was then held in the tool post and aligned with the lathe bed. It was then bored between centers. This deals with any misalignment and ensures the center of the spindle is aligned with that of the lathe. Here is the housing with the cutter body shaft. This block of steel will become the clamp holding the cutter head. It was squared on the mill using a fly cutter. The block is held against the cutter body shaft using a G clamp. And then welded together. The weld was then turned on the lathe. The housing was held in the tool post, square to the lathe bed. A dial indicator was used to align the cutter body with the lathe bed. The cutter was clamped in position using its own spindle nuts. The cutter body was then drilled and reamed for the cutter head rod. The cutter body was then drilled and tapped for the clamp screw. It was then slotted with a slitting saw forming a flexure. A hole was then drilled and tapped for the cutter head feed screw. The cutter head rod was turned from rebar, this was an experiment and I was loath to waste good material. The shear tool sure produces a superb finish. The cutter head rod was held against a piece of square hot rolled and welded. The cutter head was first held in the chuck to drill a center hole, then held as shown to turn the weld. A square bar was welded on to form the cutter head. It was then finished on the mill. The head of the cutter feed screw was inscribed with the graduations. The graduated chuck backing plate was used to index it. The cutter was ground on the surface grinder and held in the cutter head as shown in the sketch. I did not invest much effort, as I was a bit unsure of how this ball turner would turn out. However, it worked better than expected and so every lever in my shop now has a ball at its end.